Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to High Top Sports Georgia. Some massive news drop, drop today as the Georgia Bulldogs have landed four-star lineman Mason Short. We're going to hop over to Cody, the professor here. We're going to break down Mason Short and what this commitment means for the Bulldogs. Usually at Bryce Mandala on, we've been talking about recruiting and where recruiting has been for Georgia, and it's been slow. It, we've been talking about it. And again, slow in the sense of Georgia standards. Then they had that massive flip in Justice Terry, dropped out of the top five. Things are getting moving again. Mason Short kind of brings it back to normality. Mason Short, remind you, was committed to Georgia. Then the Saban situation happens, and he immediately reopened his commitment and visited Georgia like the next day. And at that point, you felt like this was a match made in heaven from the get-go. He had his top four a few days ago, but this was a Georgia lock. The moment Saban left and he, and he set up a visit, it seemed like Georgia led the way. And this, I'm telling you guys, four-star offensive lineman, He's a big pickup here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, for sure. And you say that. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, this year's going to be the year to see if Bama can run itself, kind of like, you know, another program, Ohio State, where it doesn't matter who the coach is or if it does matter. Yep. And I, I kind of think it does matter. Uh, now, Bama's media team has been doing a lot better. Uh, it seems like Willie's there every single day. I don't Strange. know if they're paying that man. I don't think Bama fans like it. I don't think it fits the tone. I mean, I get it. You have to adjust, but we'll see if it pays off. I think we like we appreciate it. I find it amusing. I like it, but does it fit the Bama standard and the Bama culture? I don't know. Yeah, so it's going to be very interesting. I am, I am obviously with the recruiting channel. I'm, I'm going to be looking very close of what what caliber of kids are they're going to be able to bring in. Um, you know, Kalen DeBoer did bring in just transferring a lot of guys. So this is first. This is a bump class. This is the first recruiting class for him. Um, not going well. Not going well for him. Um, and with Georgia, you know, they're kind of in a wash right now. Their their recruiting hasn't been great, but wait till the games come on. And uh, I think I think the recruiting trend for Georgia will go way way up. Um, they still have a lot. They still have a lot to prove with um, with fighting for another another possible national championship. You know, they're going to be highly ranked, bringing a lot of players back. They're losing some players to the NFL, but, um, you know, it seems like they're always replenishing in the trenches. For sure. And look, I don't think it's a time to panic, and we say this all the time, but it does seem a little slow. But, uh, again, I think it's, it's, it's evolving. It's changing a little bit. Let's get into this Mason Short commitment here. What I love about Mason Short, and we've talked this on our, on our main channel, High Top Sports, where offensive linemen have a weird grade. It's hard to grade them because the development process is a little bit different than other positions, like your skill positions that are just – focus on at a very early age, have a ton of camps to go to. So those usually those guys carry a lot of stars for the most part, the bulk of the stars. And for the trenches, you kind of just attack the size and teach later on. Uh, again, I'm not saying that there isn't five-star guys and you can tell the difference, but it's starting to feel like we're going to upward trend and a lot of high-quality offensive linemen because kids are seeing the quality in it. Because as a kid growing up, nobody wants to play in the trenches. It's not fun. It's not flashy. But they're starting to get a swagger about them, right, with the Kelseys, and, and other players in the NFL, the Donalds, I don't know, it's a defensive side, but the, the trenches are starting to get a lot more flavor and juice. And watching this young man's tape, which we're going to get to in here in just a minute, Cody, uh, when you're when you're talking about it, uh, his, his film is incredible to watch. He's very disciplined, and this is his junior highlight you're going to see here in just a moment, but massive pickup, and again, very uh, talented, only for a junior. Could see him trickle into the five stars by the end of it. Yeah, for sure. He's a uh, big. He's athletic. He has a he has an NFL frame at six five, uh, three oh five. They'll probably put a pr probably another 10, 15 pounds on him. Give him up three fifteen, three twenty five. That's where Georgia likes their their um their offensive lineman. He plays guard now. I see him as a guard at the next level because of his pulling and bending capability. Um, lo love to get him out in space and those screen passes. Love to pull him on those sweeping guard. Um. Uh, run plays, and I, I think he's a really, really good one. Do I think he's a day one starter? I'm not sure. It's extremely hard to start as a day one starter um, at the offensive and defensive line position. But this guy is going to be Georgia. another, yeah, especially at Georgia. This guy's going to be another guy um, that they're going to develop, and he's one of the top uh, top o offensive linemen. And I've, I'm seeing a trend. It used to be just get the big guys out there and block. I'm seeing these guys are getting more and more ref refined. They're paying for um, 
you know, outside tutoring with, with coaches. Um, it, I'm, I'm sure that he's doing the same thing and it's really paying off because some of the little stuff that you're going to see in this film technique wise is, is next level stuff. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, you know, he's ready to go. See here, he's going to get out in space and just absolutely de that guy. I mean, that's, <laughs> That's extremely hard for, for an offensive lineman to, to move like that, to move laterally and then change the direction and, and absolutely declete him. You can tell he's an absolute road grader. He's going to fit right in. You know, Georgia wants to run the ball. They're not going to throw it 50, 60 times a game. They want to they wanna run the ball and then, and then uh, run RPO and play action. Something as well, too, before you go again, Cody, is he carries his weight very well. A lot of these high scorers, again, they'll have the size, they'll have the weight, and they don't necessarily have the, the, the know-how how to use it quite properly yet. He seems to be very comfortable with his weight and moves. It look, <laughs> does it, it doesn't that move poor, like a— that poor, <laughs> that poor cornerback didn't stand a chance. Yes. Well, with that 6'5 frame, that, that helps, and he does carry that 305 very, very well. Um and we're going to see out in here, uh, we talked about the screen game. We talked about him getting out in space. This guy is is a guy that is going to be um, very impactful in the run game. Um, I, I haven't seen much pass pro from him. They may not do that much in, in high school, but with, with his athletic ability, it's not going to be a problem. I mean, he's just nasty. He, I mean... Georgia getting a, an absolute dog in the trenches. That's 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 what this is. And again, like we're, we're taking a look at his film and you're watching it here. It's just he's much more developed and established than we watch a lot of film. We watch a lot of tape with these young kids and these young men. And from what we've seen, I mean, it, it's getting sharper and sharper by the day. You're seeing offensive yep. line being higher, higher and higher rated again, four and five stars. I think that the quality of a four-star offensive lineman has evolved tremendously. Maybe two, three years ago, a four-star offensive lineman was 6'5", 320, but was just running little kids over, right? So you didn't, yeah. weren't quite sure what you were going to get, but they had the size, so like, hey, we like him. This guy's playing as if he's you know already a freshman in college. Again, the speed changes dramatically. When we talk to players uh, currently on our own show, the biggest thing is like, hey, the game's slowing down for me a little bit. So technique starts to take over. And they're not having to second guess themselves. So look, still a lot of development, a long way to go. But this kid, this this is his junior film, right? He has a whole other yeah. year uh, to to go through and to process, to build, and to work with somebody on the side on, on top of heading into to Georgia. And again, this this kid knows what he's doing. He knows where he wants to go. He's very uh, well established <clears throat> and, and focused and, and, and hungry and wanting to make a big impact. Again, he was committed to Bama. Doesn't really, I think, want to be dealing with all the nonsense of back and forth. I don't see him flipping from Georgia is kind of what I'm getting at. The only reason he flipped from Bama was given the circumstances of what happened. This was a Bama lock early on, and he was probably good to go. And as soon as that happened, he made the decision to go. So clearly Georgia was a close second when it all went down in the first place. I don't see anybody else uh, making a big run here, if I had to guess. Yeah, the the other offers is, is Kentucky, Clemson, um, and obviously top, Bama. Top four. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's what was on the on the um, two four seven site, but it's it's uh it's one of those things. He's from Georgia, I believe, too, so that helps too. He's a homegrown kid, um, and I, I'm telling you, this kid is is gonna be, he's gonna be a Francis Okanoa like what Miami did, and mm. and um you know he played he struggled very early, but he played significant snaps for that Miami team. Um, you know, Florida has one with, with Fletcher Westfall. That's what he could, he reminds me of with this technique. Um, it's very polished for that age. Absolutely. So his top schools were actually Ohio state, Georgia, Clemson, and Kentucky. Bama wasn't even the top school. So once he, he um, decided to move on, that was it. Do we know where this puts Georgia now currently with, uh, they were still at 15 when I, when I looked with the so addition, not a big bump. Okay, yeah. So yes. they, they dropped out of the top 15 with the uh, the decommitment of Justice Terry. So this is going to bring him back a little bit. But Justice Terry was a massive commit. Again, Matt, for a Georgia fan, I wouldn't panic by any stretch of imagination, but a little bit slower start than it has in years past. So big-time pickup, like we said, uh, massive commit. We'll continue to do these these videos here. We were doing on the High Top Sports Recruiting Channel. Cody, you were breaking down the Georgia film, the Georgia 
the Bulldogs absolutely loved uh, your film breakdown. So now we have a channel where they can come and eat this stuff up. So thankful we're able to have it. So if you guys want, if you enjoy this kind of content, obviously be sure to smash the, the like button and subscribe. And we do a weekly show with our, our Georgia insider, uh, Bryce Mandala. We talk about all things. So I'm sure we'll talk about Mason Short again during that time, as well as spring ball that's happening currently. And uh, the spring, the, uh, the red and uh, Red and black game will be happening here uh, in about a week from now. So, lots to go over. Going to have, have some great shows coming up. So, smash the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you boys in the next one. Peace and love, baby. Later.